Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got part one of a little mini series probably going to be three parts and it's about this little kit which is a seven transistor AM radio. Uh, got mine from Banggood for about £5.50 in the UK. You can get them on eBay they're a little bit more expensive but these things are cheap and this is a classic circuit design so what I'm hoping to do here is not only perhaps give you the opportunity to learn a little bit about how radio works but also to look at the principles of receivers now in this day and age pretty much everything is digital we've got software defined radio we've got radios that convert the signal very quickly into the digital domain and yeah all the clever bits that are quite handy to know about are, are hidden uh, I guess in software and aren't quite so easy to comprehend so good opportunity here to um, start to understand really how our radio works so if you're somebody who's um, just interested in learning a bit more about radio good chance to do that if you're perhaps thinking about doing the radio amateurs uh, course and doing the exams it'd be handy for that too and if you're thinking about maybe getting a, a second hand receiver whether it be valve or whether it be solid state and you're thinking of trying to restore it some of the principles of alignment we're going to practice those on here and that will come in very handy uh, you don't want to be um, spoiling your nice little radio that you've got hold of cheaply to restore uh, by doing some damage when you can you know take all your all your chances on something that's cost five pounds and hey if you make some mistakes well it wasn't too expensive so Okay, let's start then by looking at uh, what exactly uh, AM or amplitude modulation actually is. Okay, let's have a look exactly what we're dealing with when we talk about amplitude modulation. And to do that, I'm going to make use of my uh, 1970s analog signal generator, which has the ability to produce um, a radio frequency wave um, over quite a large range but it also has a built-in modulator that produces an audio frequency at about 950 Hertz so let's set that up and have a look at the kind of traces we get so here's a RF signal at 608 kilohertz and so that it's easier to see the effect of modulation in a moment I'm going to change the time base from 200 nanoseconds to 4 nanoseconds so you're still seeing a 608 kilohertz wave just that you're seeing more waveforms and when we turn on the internal modulation we get a AF frequency wave at about 950 hertz it isn't an exact sine wave that really doesn't matter for the signal generator point of view we just need to apply a tone to the wave for test purposes and it's perfectly acceptable for this example too so if we then modulate that radio frequency wave with that audio frequency we get that effect and I've left the blue trace on which is the audio frequency to show you can see clearly that the um, energy level or the envelope of the radio frequency wave is now uh, following the outline of the audio frequency wave and if we just go from 200 microseconds to 80 microseconds so you can see just one um, full wavelength you can actually see the 900 and, sorry the 608 kilohertz waves and their amplitude is simply following the whatever has been the frequency that's been modulated so that's what happens when you look at them uh, in terms of a conventional oscilloscope view if we now look um, at it um, that's the time domain plot of a, a carrier wave in frequency domain uh, the kind of thing you'd see is that so you've got a very sharp point in the middle it's about 608 kilohertz and there is the carrier wave the uh, modulated wave if we then view that in frequency domain you can see straight away the changes and it's first of all wider because what you've now got are the two sidebands to the left the upper sorry the lower sideband to the right the upper sideband and what you've effectively got there is you've mixed the frequencies the carrier wave actually in this case is slightly less of an energy level but it's still very much present you can see a distinct peak in the center at 600 kilohertz so that's what we're dealing with and that's what our radio is trying to receive and demodulate okay so we've got our AM signal being transmitted through the airwaves how do we then turn that into something which these ears can make use of 
Um, so let's look at the design of this receiver. I mentioned earlier it's a classic. Uh, it's what is usually referred to as a super het, which is um, short for supersonic heterodyne. So frequency too high to hear, and heterodyne is all to do with mixing signals. Let's look then at a very high level exactly how that circuit works. Here's a block diagram of the main parts of the receiver that we're going to be building. The aerial receives the amplitude modulated signal and it's in exactly the same form that we saw in the slides just now. The local oscillator also produces a radio frequency uh, oscillation, however that's fixed. Now for uh, just for clarity let's call the incoming signal A and the local oscillator signal B. When we mix those um, in the mixing section we get four things from the output. We get A and we get B but we also get A plus B and A minus B. So those are the mixer outputs. Now A minus B in this example is going to be the one that we want and as long as we link the front end tuning and the local oscillator tuning with a gang capacitor which we'll look at in detail um, in a few minutes that means the local oscillator will track the tuned signal and A minus B will always be at the same frequency but the modulation will be unchanged. So what comes out will be at a different frequency but it will still have the same amplitude modulation A minus B in this case. So what, uh, so what I've got here is a plot of the FM broadcast band um, here in the northern UK. Uh, don't worry about the fact that it's um, FM, the principle is pretty much the same and those peaks that you can see along there are the various stations set out along the broadcast band. Now the filters in the intermediate frequency have a shape or need to have a shape which allow us to have to place the peak of the signal uh, of, the, of the filter over the top of a signal which means that it receives the wanted signal but strongly rejects the ones either side and then as we tune the radio we can tune up and we can recenter over another signal and as you can see the lower part of the skirts there yes it is just coming into another frequency but it's at a sufficiently reduced level that we shouldn't be able to hear anything and that's the principle of, of the IF stages. Demodulation simply removes the carrier wave and obviously the AF amplifier uh, then continues to uh, produce it to a level that we can actually hear it from in this case a speaker or headphones. Those are the high level design principles. Let's now look uh, in a more detailed fashion exactly how this circuit turns those ideas into practice. Here then is the circuit diagram of the radio in detail and I've made a few uh, changes here to reflect the reality. In particular I've removed the Chinese characters that um, describe the colour of the transformers and I've replaced them uh, with the actual words for the colours. And we've corrected the problem on transformer 7 on the right hand side there where there was an incorrect uh, drawing of the wiring. So looking through how the circuit works then, along the top we've got a whole host of components, particularly the two diodes on the left and the electrolytic capacitors just right of centre and to the right hand side uh, and they're all to do with um, uh, controlling and smoothing out the, the power supply from the, from the 3 volt uh, DC, the two batteries. Now you can see along the top there are uh, several places where there's a, a current range marked in the one I've shown there 0.18 to 0.22 milliamps and that corresponds to where the X is um, on the circuit diagram I've also put a box around it there. Now rather helpfully they've implemented that for us on the circuit board and it looks like this. It's actually a little break and you can see there's five uh, red boxed areas there where there's actually a break in the circuit board and that allows you to uh, put your multimeter in current mode across those two pads and you can measure the current and there isn't any mention of it in the instructions 
but that's because there isn't any instructions. Um, but obviously once you've measured it, you then need to bridge those two pads uh, with a little bit of solder, otherwise it's not going to work at all. But it is quite a, a good way of doing it because it allows you to, to measure the current at each stage, so you're happy that each, each particular stage of amplification actually works. On to the um, receiving and demodulating of, of the radio signals then. On the left hand side there you've got the ferrite rod antenna which is shown as, as B1 as a transformer and along with capacitor 1 and its associated trimmer which actually is a built-in part of the of, of C1 uh, you've got the the front end tuning there which selects the the radio frequency. Uh, C1, the second part of C1 which as you can see from the dotted lines connected by, by a gang uh, that's the uh, part of the circuit to do with the oscillation and again you've got the associated trimmer capacitor which allows you to tweak the precise value of the oscillator. So when you work those that, that capacitor, the capacitor C1, uh, A and B, they work together and the IF will then hopefully, uh, tr the local oscillator will then hopefully track uh, the incoming frequency. Transistor 1 uh, acts as both as a, an amplifier and an oscillator uh, as you can see there and the mixing occurs inside uh, B2 which is the only one of the um, IF cans that doesn't have a built-in capacitor so um, the coil on the oscillator and the coil on the collector of, of the first transistor are the bits that do the, the mixing of the oscillations with the incoming radio frequency and then we've got several stages of uh, intermediate frequency amplification along with three associated uh, IF transformers and there are three capacitors shown on the left hand side of those cans and although the capacitors are shown as being outside the cans in actual fact they're built into them so you won't find those anywhere in the component list which is if you're not familiar with that is potentially a little bit confusing and the 1k resistor essentially is um, uh, some f some negative feedback that effectively is what is the automatic gain control. Demodulation occurs then in this area and then it's fed through the ver the potentiometer at the bottom there which acts as a volume control decoupled by C10 into the base of V5 and the output of V well V5 is the first uh, the driver stage of the audio amplification. It feeds the primary of that uh, transformer B6 which has got a, a green um, colour around its windings and the secondary of that transformer has two as a centre tap and each side of the centre tap drives the pair of transistors in push-pull mode. So what you've got going on there is you've got um, the top transistor being driven in phase, the bottom transistor being driven out of phase. Their outputs are then, f the collectors of those true transistors are then taken into the final transformer and because they're fed in either side of the centre tap those two phases are effectively recombined and the output to the speaker is hopefully then um, in phase and obviously changed in impedance. Okay we've been quite a bit of theory on this uh, particular video but hopefully you've found it useful. If you're thinking mm, this is interesting uh, can I encourage you to get one bought because uh, they're five or six pounds and if you get your order into Banggood now uh, it'll be here by the time uh, part three is out and you could be building it. Uh, I'm not making any money from this, I'm not on commission, uh, I just think it's a really handy way to learn lots and lots about radio. So if that's something you fancy in doing then um, get on with it, get one ordered and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get some pleasure from it and some learning too. Thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, part one, please click the thumbs up. If not, you can click the thumbs down. All comments are welcome, so please feel free to, to make comments. Uh, next part is to do with actually putting the kit together and doing some DC testing. So we'll see you for that one.